Today we'll be looking at radioactivity. But before we continue, if it's the first time of you joining this channel, please click on the subscribe button so that you can have access to a number of videos and even the new ones will be uploaded. Now when you hear the word radioactivity, the names that comes to mind is Becure. He was the first to start a study on radioactivity in 1896. When he observed that a crystal of uranium source spontaneous, spontaneously emitted radiation. When you hear about spontaneity, it means something occurring without an external force. So a nuclear just turned its own and started emitting radiation without anything causing it. That is spontaneity. Now, for you to understand this concept, first of all, know that all that we've been studying over time has been about chemical reactions and it involves what electrons in the valence share. And why this electron goes into combination is because they want to become stable by either attaining the duplex structure or the octet structure. So every chemical combination you see in nature is an attempt to become what? Stable. Aside the noble gases that have both the duplex structure and in, that has either the duplex structure or the octet structure, every other element in the periodic table is not stable. And every combination you see them undergo is an attempt to what? Attain either the duplex structure or the octet structure of the noble gases. And they do this either by giving out electron or accepting el electron or sharing electron. This is where you hear about what? Chemical combination. You say there are two types electrovalent combination and what? Covalent what? Combination. Talking about radioactivity, the Curie now call this process of spontaneous emission of radiation by uranium atom as what? Radioactivity. Other scientists that contributed to this system are. Perrier and Maria Curie, who detected radioactivity in thorium. They also conducted an analysis on pitch blend that had uranium in it and discovered that it emitted radiation that were far, far more than that emitted by uranium. An analysis of that compound gave rise to the discovery of polonium and radium. Now, the question is what is radioactivity itself? Radioactivity is the spontaneous emission of radiation by an element. The spontaneous emission of radiation by what? An element. An element may have both stable and radioactive what? Isotopes. For example, your chlorine 35 is stable, while chlorine 37 is an unstable and radioactive what? Isotopes. Now, characteristics of radioactivity, they are spontaneous emissions. They can penetrate materials. They can also ionize. So these are the characters, characteristics, characteristics of radioactivity. One, they, they are penetrative, that means they can penetrate materials. Two, they can ionize. Three, they can cause fluorescence in certain compounds. Four, they emit energy. Now let's look at types, types of radiations. There are three main types of radioactive radiations. One is Alpha, the alpha ray, two, we have the gamma ray, three, we have the beta ray. Let's look at each of these alpha, the alpha ray. 
Let's look at that properties. The alpha ray one is positively charged two it has it has a mass number of four three it has an atomic number of two that means an alpha particle is actually a helium atom because helium has atomic number four and uh, no mass number four and atomic number two so when there's an emission of a part particle is actually a loss of a helium atom four alpha particle can travel in air and penetrate certain materials but it has very low penetrating power penetrating aluminium to about 0.1 millimeter. It can also cause fluorescence in certain compounds because of its high ionization power. It has very high ionization power. Two, let's look at the beta particle. Or the beta ray. Beta particle. Beta is a particle. You can call it beta particle or beta ray. Why? The beta particle is a very fast moving stream of electron. Unlike the alpha particle, the beta particle is negatively charged. It has a negative charge. And the mass is relatively small. Each particle of the beta particle has a mass number of zero, an atomic number of one. And this is represented by what? The what? Electron, because electron has a mass number of zero, an atomic number of one. Beta rays compared to the alpha rays are highly penetrative. They, are, they have a higher penetrating power compared to the compared to alpha. They have higher penetrating power. So if you compare the beta particle and the alpha particle, they have higher penetrating power compared to the alpha particle. And it can cause fluorescence in certain compounds. So them too can cause fluorescence in certain compounds. Can cause fluorescence in certain compounds. But not one compound they don't cause fluorescence in is zinc sulfide. Zinc sulfide. Now let's look at the gamma ray. Let's look at the gamma ray. The gamma ray. The gamma ray are not particle but electromagnetic waves, similar to light. They, as a matter of fact, they travel with a speed of light. And because of that, of the three radioactive particles, that is the alpha, the beta, and the gamma, the gamma ray is the most penetrating of all of them very very penetrating and it has the least ionization power it travel fire material and majorly if you want to stop a gamma ray you use lead block they can cause fluorescent in certain substances like sodium iodide and zinc sulfide now we now understand that radioactivity involves the spontaneous disintegration of the nucleus of an atom when an radioactive material disintegrates spontaneously, the word decay is used. So if you don't say disintegration, you can say what? Decay. And during disintegration, a radioactive material can emit, let's say if this is a radioactive material A or element A, 
and you undergo disintegration, it can do it in either by emitting an alpha particle or a beta. This is sign for alpha uh, for beta. This is sign for alpha or a beta particle. So if, if to form a new compound, let's call it B. Now, if it emit an alpha particle, it can emit an alpha particle alone, or it can come accompany you with a gamma ray. If you emit a beta particle, it can do that alone, uh, accompanying with what? A beta ray. It can also emit an alpha particle and a beta particle alone, or emit an alpha particle and a beta particle followed by a gamma ray, or just a beta particle alone. On the whole, no one can say exactly the way a reductive element will disintegrate. It's a spontaneous process. Now, the element that undergo this disintegration is called the parent nucleus. Why the new nucleus form or the new product or the product is called the daughter nucleus. So during reductive decay or disintegration, you can either have an alpha particle emitted or a beta particle emitted. Now let's look at alpha decay. That's a sign for alpha, de for alpha decay. Now when a radioactive element undergoes an alpha decay, the parent nucleus, let's call it A, having atomic number Z, uh, mass number, okay, let's call it T, having an atomic number, what am I call it, mass number A, an atomic number Z, if you undergo an alpha decay, it will form a new element, we'll call it X, with a mass number A, which is less than 4, an atomic number Z, less than 2. Because an alpha decay actually involves the em emission of a helium atom. Remember we say an alpha ray is a helium atom because it has a mass number of 4. An atomic number of two. So if you are emitting an alpha particle, it means you are emitting a helium atom. That means your mass number will have to reduce by four, and atomic number by what? Two. For example, if uranium, uranium two thirty eight, atomic number ninety two, undergoes an alpha decay. If you undergo an alpha decay, you will have uranium. Now you subtract 4 from 238. 238 minus 4, you're going to have 234. And then 90 minus 2, you have what? 92 minus 2, you have 90. To have the new element, TH. So this is how you balance an alpha decay. So when an element gives out an alpha particle in alpha decay, the, the mass number will reduce by 4, and the atomic number will reduce by what? 2. Let's look at another example. If thorium, that is just from thorium, TH23490, undergoes an alpha decay, to form the new compound Ra plus 4He. Let's look at the new compound. 234 minus 4 will give you 230. 90 minus 2 will give you 288. And do will be the new element that will be formed. And that's what we call the process whereby you convert one element to a new element is called transmutation. All right, let's look at beta decay. Beta decay. When a nucleus of an atom emits a beta particle, let's say element X, 
with atomic num uh, mass number A and atomic number Z emit a beta particle. This is, anyway, you see this, this is the sign for beta. Emits a beta particle to form element Y. The mass number will remain the same, but the atomic number will increase by one. Then the electron as a beta particle will be given out. For example, you have thorium, 234, atomic number 90. If he undergoes beta decay, it will form a new atom with the same mass number and a new atomic number. That is going to be the atomic number now. Here is 90. It's going to be 90 plus 1. So here is going to be 91. Plus what? An electron. Another example of a beta decay. Let's look at lead. Lead. Lead is a like 240 with atomic number 82. If you undergoes a beta decay, you're going to have a new product, bismuth. Because it's a beta decay. Now let's look. Because it's a beta decay, the mass number will not be affected. It will remain the same. But the atomic number will change by one. So it's going to be Remember, we say Z plus 1. So it's going to be 82 plus 1. So here it's going to be what? 83. And that is our beta decay. So that is how to go about writing the formulas and the equations for radioactive decays. Now let's look at half life. Half-life. The half-life of a radioactive element is the time taken for half of the total number of atoms in a given sample of the element to decay. The time taken for half of the total number of atoms in a given sample of the element to decay. Or the time taken for the total number of atoms in a given sample of the element to decay by what? Half. That means if the half life of element A is say one year and you are giving 50 grams of element A, in one year's time you know that it will reduce to what? 25 grams. That is half life. Now we are going to be doing a calculation of this in a separate discussion. So we'll continue from there in our next discussion on radioactivity. Please, if this is your first time, do not forget to subscribe. Click the subscribe button, leave your comments, your questions in the comment section. Give us a thumbs up and share this video.